Hey, and welcome to MFFL TV. I'm your host, Dylan, and today we're just going to discuss whether the Mavs should make a trade before the start of the season. So I've tried to highlight two somewhat realistic trades, see how the Mavs could go about it and how they would look in the team. First, before that, let me know, do you think the Mavs even need to make a trade or are you happy with the roster at the moment? Always love hearing what you guys have to say, so definitely let me know. Also, before we get in the video, like and subscribe, it really does help out the channel. And that's where you can find me out on Instagram as well if you're interested. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So, the first one would be getting Jeremy Lamb. There are rumors going out that the Mavericks are interested in picking him up with the trade exception. The contracts are very similar, so that could work. But, you know... Would Jeremy Lamb even fit in this team? Try to break down his player profile a little bit. Uh, obviously, don't want to make it too long. So just try to give some quick dot points. So first, he's long and lengthy. Uh, he's only 6'5", which is pretty average for a shooting guard. But he does have a very long wingspan. As well as that, he's an excellent free throw shooter. It was about 90% last season. Uh, he's a good scorer and a promising three-point shooter. He did shoot about 40% from three last season. And in terms of scoring, his best season came, I believe, in 2018-2019, where he did average about 15 points a game, both as a starter and off the bench, which is good because you can throw him in multiple different lineups and he can also produce. The main issue with him is, you know, his best season was quite a while ago. He did have, he has had a few injuries. Uh, he did tear his ACL, which is really tough to get back from. Uh, as well, he is a bit of an inconsistent defender. He does pick up about a steal a game, but it means he does gamble quite a bit. You know, he does get caught out of position. And his offensive versatility is somewhat questionable. You know, sometimes he does just rely on his spot-up shooting. Doesn't really do much else on the offensive end. However, the good thing is, you know, we do have... A lot of guys that can score, maybe not enough that can necessarily create their own shot, but with Luka, you're always going to have a chance. You know, he's going to get a bunch of open looks, and I think Dallas is really a system where he could thrive in. I could really see him playing off Luka. If he can come back, you know, look good next season, be healthy, improve his defense as well. You know, Jason Kidd, I think, would really help with that as he's really trying to bring an emphasis on defense. And I think, you know, what he brings could really help this team. Uh, just a quick look at how he could line up. If everything works out perfectly, you know, he's someone that could potentially move into that starting lineup. Uh, I love Tim Hardaway Jr., but maybe that can create better balance between the starters and the bench. You know, having Tim Hardaway Jr. as that sixth man can really help that second unit offensively. And then our starters will be, still be fielding out a very strong team of Luca, Jeremy Lamb, Reggie Bullock, Finney Smith, and Paul Zingas, just as an example. With this, you know, I think we have a lot of length, a lot of athleticism. You know, we've got the shooters. Pretty much everyone on the court will be able to shoot, so we can really space out teams. Luca can go to work. Hopefully with this, KP can get more touches as well, because he really is the out-and-out -out second option on this team, with Tim Hardaway Jr. on the bench. So I think this could definitely work. As a whole, yes, it is a gamble getting Jeremy Lamb because of the injuries, but I think for the trade exception, uh, Indiana has been has made it known that they are trying to get rid of him. I feel like he's a player that could really fit in certain systems, and I think working off a superstar next to Luka could really help him. Uh, but even after he came back, he did pick up a few niggling injuries, which is a concern. So that's the main thing. I feel like if he could stay healthy... I feel like this would be a perfect move for the Dallas Mavericks, especially just for the TPE. Uh, so personally, I'd be definitely on board. But let me know down below, what do you think of Jeremy Lamb? Would you be willing to take him? He also, as I said before, has exceeded coming off the bench as well. So maybe you could put Tim Hardaway Jr. or a Maxi Kleber into the starting lineup. And he can be someone that comes off the bench and helps the second unit stay afloat while Luca KP get their rest. However, the second player I want to talk about is Eric Gordon. Uh, it seems as if he doesn't really have a place in Houston at the moment. Uh, Houston also look like they want to get rid of John Wall and they really want to go young. You know, they got Porter Jr., Jalen Green now. I feel like they have a lot of players that they really want to give a lot of minutes to. And I don't really know where Eric Gordon fits into that. 
He does have three years left in his contract, but his third year is pretty much not guaranteed. Like it's, I think it's only if he becomes an all-star or if his team wins a championship that it becomes guaranteed. Can't see any of those happening. Hopefully, if he comes to Dallas, he wins a chip. But don't want to get my hopes up too high for the moment. I feel like Houston could maybe make this trade. You know, with this, they're sort of cutting that big contract and splitting it up. Maybe makes it easier for them to trade. And they're also getting Dwight Powell. Their big man rotation is quite thin. You know, they have Christian Wood. They drafted Senjin. Uh, so besides that, maybe Dwight Powell can play 10 minutes a game to help them out. And also, he's a great locker room guy. So maybe Houston would want him to try and help the young guys along. And Trey Burke sort of just fitting in salary at the moment. Um, maybe you'd have to throw in a second round pick or two. I also think Eric Gordon, someone who would come into this team, come off the bench and really succeed. Uh, we'll quickly get into his player profile. So what are the pros for Eric Gordon? You know, he's an elite scorer. When he's healthy, you know, he can take over any game. He has the potential to put up 30 on any given night. As well as that, he's someone that can create his own shot. And I think that's something we're lacking. You know, Jalen Brunson can do it. Of course, Luca, Tim Hardaway Jr. to an extent can just rise over people and shoot. And Paul Zingas, you know, at times can have a one dribble pull up jump shot or face up and shoot over defenders. But we really don't have guys where you can give it consistently to the end of the sh at the end of the shot clock and have them make a play. Uh, I think he's definitely someone that can do that. You know, uh, Eric Gordon was also a former six man of the year, which just shows that you know, he could be someone that comes off the bench for the Mavs and really succeeds. You know, he's familiar with the role coming off the bench. The cons, of course, injuries. You know, he's uh, missed a lot of games over the last few seasons, as well as that undersized, and he's a bit of an inconsistent shooter. You know, his three-point percentage consistently goes up and down. So that's the thing. I think with Jeremy Lamb, it's less of a risk because you're really just trading the TPE. However, of course, we do have a lot of players, so we will need to get rid of some of them if we want to bring Lamb in. We did just sign now Frank Nilakina as well, which makes us even more uh, over the limit of players. However, with Gordon, yes, he's also injury prone and it is a risk. I think it's, you know, lower risk, higher reward. You still give it Dwight Powell and Trey Burke, who could potentially not even fit into Jason Kidd's rotation, depending on the development of Moses Brown. Maybe Jason Kidd prefers Willie Colley-Stein anyway. So yes, you're giving away two players, but you're potentially getting one who can really change the second unit. You know, he can be someone that has the green light off the bench. Him and Jalen Brunson, yes, not the best defensively, but offensively can really keep us in games. He can help take the burden off Luka, and he can be someone that, you know, when everyone else is off, can take over a game and win it for us. This is how our bench could potentially look. So if we get Eric Gordon, I'd assume Tim Hardaway Jr. would start. And then maybe we have something along the lines of Jalen Brunson, Eric Gordon, Sterling Brown, Maxi Kleber, and Moses Brown. I think that's a very strong bench. Uh, you know, you got your length and your athleticism with Moses Brown, Maxi Kleber. Sterling Brown is a good 3 and D player. Brunson... Really good scorer off the bench. Eric Gordon, when healthy, a great scorer off the bench. So I think, you know, this could be really good for Dallas. I think of the two, Jeremy Lamb is probably more likely just because he fits into the TPE. Uh, Indiana's been known that they want to get rid of him. And I think uh, he's also a bit younger, so it makes a bit more sense. However, honestly, I'd really take either player. I think they're both really good and could really be good players in Dallas and fit in. But let me know, what do you think? Do you think either of them would be good acquisitions or do you think they're both really not fit in well? And as always, like and subscribe uh, and I'll see you in that next video.